WHIP, Philly's number one college radio station. Now, on Philadelphia's number one college radio, WHIP, Rational Radio. Radio listeners to Rational Radio on WHIP, the number one college radio station in the city of brotherly love. And uh, it's a great day out in Philly today. It's a nice fall day. It's it's nice out. How's everyone feeling? Oh, feeling we're good. good. We are doing great here. So that's a nice way to start out the week uh, on, a, on a positive note here in the Rational Radio WHIP studios. Got a lot to talk about today. A lot to talk about today. We're going to have a great guest on later in the show. Yeah, Bob Patterson coming on to uh, talk about some projects that are going on, or a project that is uh, set to go on in uh, Camden, which uh, they, which officials say should uh, help to revitalize the waterfront area. But uh, Patterson sees it a little differently, so that'll be a good conversation to talk to him. Um, but to start off the show today, we are talking about something that happened uh, yesterday, an article that was uh, published yesterday on abcnews.com. Com, um, talking about how there was a, uh, a massive rally against uh, in- encouraging the uh, the removal of the Confederate flag. Uh, emblem from the Mississippi state flag. So Mississippi's state flag still has um, the blue uh, uh, cross that is seen, yes, the, the X yes. uh, that is seen on the Confederate flag. They still have that on their state flag up in the uh, top left-hand corner. Um, so there was, a, there was a demonstration outside the Mississippi Capitol um, encouraging uh, lawmakers to pass a resolution to take uh, to change the state flag and um, either make it just all one thing or a, a completely new design, but just something that got the Confederate flag off of off of the uh, state flag. And uh, someone in the article was quoted as saying, if a former Confederate general recognizes the divisiveness of a symbol of disunity, we must do so also. Yeah. Well, so I, I, I understand it. I mean, I, under, I definitely get it. Um, I mean, that's that flag it symbolizes a time that wasn't great in our country here, especially a lot of disunity. And uh, it's definitely something that, like I said, brings bar, brings about a, a bad part of our past. So I understand that they want to take that down. I get it. So I mean, ABC News phrases it completely correctly. It's a symbol of racism and hatred, to be honest. And people are saying, well, it, the Confederate flag should be on there because it also represents a part of our history, but then just put it in a museum. Yeah. Don't put it on a flag yeah, that yeah. represents a whole community. Yeah. You know, we, we have a lot of things that symbolize our past and our history, but I'm not flying them on the back of my Ram pickup truck or anything like that, which is primarily where you see most of these Confederate flags nowadays. Um yeah, I mean, do we? I mean, there, there. I mean, there are people out there that you know. They say you know that it's a sign of, like, like Izzy said earlier, a sign of uh, you know where we were as a country, yeah. and uh, they say it's historic. And even um, I know driving down um, to the beaches in Delaware, uh, driving through Southern Delaware. I mean, you say. I mean, it's not just it's not just a thing that you think happens, you know, down in Georgia and Mississippi no, and it's, Alabama. It's, I mean, it, it's everywhere. It is, yeah. and it I mean, is, these definitely. people like, I mean. I I don't know. Are you going to tell them anyway oh, to no. take that Not down, say it, that you can't do this? I no. went to a school in like the suburbs of Philly, and people had Confederate flags on their cars. So. Yeah, I mean, it's de- it's one of those things that people just feel so proudly about that they don't want to take it down. I mean, do you remember, you know, when Walmart came out and said that they will no longer sell Confederate flags or anything Confederate? Well, a guy went in uh, to a Walmart to get a Confederate flag cake made. And they uh, said to him, you know, we cannot, we cannot make this. We cannot promote the, c- promote the Confederate flag. So he pulls out his smartphone, pulls up a picture of the ISIS flag, and says, can you make this? And they said, absolutely. Now, really? now Walmart okay. has come out, Walmart came out to say that the, they were just, the man who was the baker was very naive, and he didn't know that it was the ISIS flag. But that's just one of those things, you know, how, na- uh, how naive that this country is to, you know, this is something part of our history that we can't make, but yet at the same time we would make an ISIS flag cake. Yeah. I, I mean, I think it's that's, very just, interesting. That I mean, story just sticks out yeah. to me every time this Confederate yeah. flag issue comes about. You know, it's, it, it just, it's crazy. 
Yeah, I don't. Um, I mean, I don't. I don't know. Are there any instances like sh- should it should it be uh, something that's just outlawed completely and say nobody can fly no, it? No, definitely not. It shouldn't be outlawed. Um, but I, I feel like people's personal use they can have it, like on your car, right. a bumper sticker, things like that. But state flag wise, yeah, I, I not flying it over uh, state capitals, things like that. I get that. Yeah, that needs to go away. But personal use, things like that, it's fine. Well, flags represent. And then, like, it represents that whole community. You can't say that everyone in that community identifies with the Confederate flag, which is why it shouldn't be on that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Flag. And so this came up as a uh, as a result of the um, this whole discussion came up uh, as a result of the uh, shooting that happened in Charleston, South Carolina, um, where they're saying that the alleged shooter was uh, was like motivated by white supremacy mm-hmm. and uh, he was a racist. Um, and then so they were blaming the Confederate flag. For the shooting, okay, which well, that's just that's ridiculous. You can't I mean, blame right. So because yeah. South Carolina, they had the flag above their state capitol, yeah. right yes. out in front of their state capitol. Yes. They had the Confederate flag flying, yes. and then eventually, popular opinion prevailed, and they and they took it down. Even if even if they were to outlaw a flag like the Confederate flag. Most likely, that guy's still going to believe in that flag. So yeah. it's not the flag that he believes in; it's yeah. the the premise behind it is what he used to is what he believes in. So that's, yeah, that's taking a lot of personal responsibility yes. out of the situation. Yes, it's, it, it, it goes back to the whole like gun violence thing too. People are blaming the gun, or in this case, the flag, rather than the person behind it. Yeah, I, I yeah, I mean, I don't think I mean, but then all right. So let's say we say it's okay to fly the Confederate flag like for personal, yeah. uh-huh. like on your house or on your car yes. or whatever. Um, so then someone who says, comes up and say, hey, you know, for me, this symbolizes, you know, uh, a past, a really dark time in America's history with slavery and everything. What what should we tell them? Okay, well, so you're saying, like, if someone were to come up to you and say this is offensive yeah, towards me. Yeah, Let's say, you know, it's out on your house and, you know, one of your neighbors is offended mm-hmm. by it. Right. And then they say that falls. It's all under freedom of speech. Then I mean, it it falls under our First Amendment right to be able to do so. So that that falls under the First Amendment right that, you know, you know, there's a lot of things that I could put on my car that might offend people. But they're they're not I'm not going to take it down just because. Yeah, there was a comparable situation this weekend. I went to Outfest, um, which if you're unfamiliar with that, it's currently um, what's it called? National coming out week. Oh, yeah, I did see. I saw a rally uh, over at. Uh, City Hall the other day. Yeah, and this kind of just kicked off the whole week, and it was just a celebration of everyone being able to come out and share their stories. And in, like, the middle of the festival, there was some guy screaming that God hates gay people, and he was allowed to be there only because he was allowed to have his own opinion. But everyone there was obviously offended, but there was nothing they could do about it. I mean, yeah, I mean, it comes back, I mean, you know, I mean, their, their rights are just as important as as the other people's rights. Which I is mean, unfortunate because it's offensive, but there really isn't anything we can do about it. Right. I mean, you look at the message that is uh, demonstrated by the people at Westboro Baptist Church. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. that's, I mean, that freedom of speech when they, when they picket military funerals. Yeah. I mean. It, lo- there's just so many things that it's all freedom of speech that there's going to be things that are going to offend people. I mean. No matter what it is, a bumper sticker on the back of your car, just w- or like what you said at the, the coming out day, um, mm-hmm. how people just go up and say, God hates you. Yeah. Th- there's offense to that. There's nothing we can do about it. There's always going to be things that are going to offend this nation. But, you know, that's what kind of makes this nation great in a sense that we can say what we want and not have repercussions for it. Yeah, so in some cases, in, I was in gonna some say, cases, yeah. cases. In, in most cases. <laughs> um, so we just, I mean, in, you know, 10 minutes just made that issue sound very simple so why so why is it such a big issue national i mean when after this happened why was this i mean this was on the news constantly i think i think part of the reason why it's so big right now is because we dealt with for three four months we dealt with so many police brutality um uh issues and people pointed the race card at that a lot and then a lot of these police brutality things were happening towards the south and then when they were questioning you know the whole confederate flag and its symbol and how race is still a big thing and the whole confederate flag has a direct correlation to race and slavery and things like that so i think that's what a lot of people 
wanted they people when they have an issue they want to they want to point the finger at one thing so either it's gun violence or the president or or they want something tangible that you can say this is the issue and so i think in this case the confederate flag was that issue yeah so that's what they that's what they went to I mean, uh, yeah, because it's, I mean, you know, this was this was nonstop that you were hearing about this. And then it's everybody's talking about it and, and all that. Yeah. Um, and I just think that it's, I don't know. I mean, if you're, I mean, it wasn't before this happened. I mean, it, was, it wasn't, it wasn't nobody an issue said at all. No one cared about it. No one cared about it. Right. I mean, maybe there were some people yeah, that, Yeah, I mean, you know, there were some people who hated it, but it wasn't on headlines right, of yeah. CNN and Fox and all yeah. that stuff. So. Right. And my one in one of my classes, my one professor was talking about how um, there are certain groups of Native Americans who dislike the American flag because of all the injustice yeah, yeah. that has been committed against them by the American government, yeah. and that they actually symbolize with the Confederate flag. And so he so they come out and they say they support the Confederate flag, and then they're they, villainized they, and yeah. they're like, no, you can't support that. Well, yeah. Why not? Yeah, why not? They're, I guess they should clarify what aspects of the Confederate right, flag they see, identify but then, with. But, right, but then you're, I mean, then it's, that's it's like, oh, it's like, oh, well, I identify with uh, this aspect of the Confederate flag, but not this one, but yeah. like, I yeah. identify with half the flag and not like. I don't know. It's, it's just a very gray area. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there, there are Americans who just don't even like the American flag. I mean, we had that whole thing um, going out on social media and on video, vi- people were sending out videos of people purposely stomping on the American flag. I don't know if you guys ever saw those videos. Yeah. It was kind of like a trend. It was kind of like the ice water challenge, but in complete disregard for our country. Yeah. So I don't know. I mean, it's a complicated issue. I mean, everybody yeah. has an opinion on yeah, it. Yeah, everyone has an opinion on it. If you ever want to weigh in on what we're talking about, call us at 215-204-WHIP. But yeah, you're right, Ryan. It's just one of those things that everyone has their opinion on it. And you know, it, it like it's never gonna. I personally never think it's gonna be outlawed. Um, it might be taken off of of you know Capitol buildings yeah, and, and things flags, like that. But yeah. it, for personal use, that's it's never gonna be outlawed. No, no. I mean because no. I don't see how you can say yeah every single person. Yeah. Like you don't have the right to yeah. do like because then what? Wh- wh- where's the line then? Right. Where's the line in the sand that says I can't have an American flag on my bumper then, or I can't right. have yeah. Uh, it's my favorite like. Um, like the an NRA, an NRA bumper sticker on my car. Yeah. Right. It's all just expression. Yeah. It's all just expression. Exactly. Yeah. So we're going to take a quick break here on Rational Radio, but be sure to stay tuned to the show. We have a guest coming up in our next segment who is going to be talking about some changes that could be coming to Camden and why they might not be such good changes. Okay. Yeah. So, so stay tuned yeah. for that on Rational Radio on WHIP Philly's number one college radio station. From the WHIP News Team, I'm Bianca Sorrentino, and it's time for your news now. Police are investigating the shooting of a 32-year-old man that happened on Saturday, October 10th, around 11.50 p.m. The 32-year-old man was in his car behind the wheel when he was shot twice in the Kensington section of Philadelphia. The victim drove himself to St. Christopher's Hospital for Children on Lehigh Avenue and was later transferred to Temple University Hospital. The shooter is still at large. Around 3.30 a.m. Sunday morning, a 22-year-old male was seriously injured after a fight broke out outside Rite Aid on the 4500 block of North 5th Street. Police say that the fight was between three or four males. The fight stopped when the 22-year-old male fell and hit his head on the ground. The 22-year-old male is in critical condition at Temple University Hospital, while a 17-year-old male also went to the hospital for minor injuries. Police are investigating this incident, and so far no charges have been filed. For breaking news, follow us on Twitter at WHIP Radio and check out WHIPRadioTU.com. We'll see you in an hour with your news update. I started going cold turkey. Well, at least when I'm in the car. I know I shouldn't do it, but it's so hard to stop. That's why I hide it from myself, so I won't be tempted. I used to do it all the time. I stopped by locking it in my glove compartment. My friend used to do it way too much. Now I turn it off when we're in the car. My solution is simple. I just don't do it. There are lots of ways to stop yourself and others from texting and driving. How will you stop? 
Tell us at stoptextstoprex.org. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. You don't usually get a stock tip from a 16-year-old, but I'm here to tell you about a different kind of stock. It's called Better Futures, a stock for social change that's not about making money. Instead, you invest to help students like me go to college, which ends up making the future better for all of us. My name is Alicia, and I'm your dividend. Invest in Better Futures with UNCF. Visit uncf.org slash invest. A mind is a terrible thing to waste, but a wonderful thing to invest in. Brought to you by UNCF and the Ad Council. My name is Ruth Rusi. I'm a retired teacher. I'm 91 years old, and this is how I live united. I say retired, but not really. Once a week, I read books to children as part of United Way's education program. Reading to a child creates links between language and literacy. It creates a bond between grown-up and child. And believe it or not, it prepares them for a better academic future. Oh, we read about frogs and flies and pigs with wings, all sorts of juicy stuff. It's a joy to watch all those little faces. I figure I have the time and they have the need. And I've always believed that if we're not here to help each other, then what are we here for really? My name is Ruth Rusi. I help kids prepare to succeed in school. So I don't just wear the shirt, I live it. Give, advocate, volunteer, live united. Go to liveunited.org. Brought to you by United Way and the Ad Council. to Rational Radio here on WHIP, the number one college radio station in the city of brotherly love. Uh, whenever you want to call in and weigh in on what you, we're talking about, call us at 215-204-WHIP. So we're going to dive right into our next topic here of Camden. So Ryan, what's going on in Camden right now? Yeah, so basically uh, what's going on is that uh, there is a, there's a project uh, that has been proposed to kind of help revitalize uh, the city of Camden, uh, the waterfront area, um, and basically the you know artistic renderings that have been put out uh, depict these big skyscraper buildings yeah. right on the waterfront that obviously that make it look like a nice place yeah, to go and to try nice, and try and drive some business almost like a small metropolitan area right yeah and with the struggle in Camden you know that is that has played yeah. the area for yes. so long I mean yes. it's you know looks like a good project but. Uh, it might have its downsides. Mm-hmm. So now joining us on the phone is uh, Bob Patterson, who uh, previously uh, was a senior speechwriter at Health and Human Services under George W. Bush and served as a senior policy advisor in the Department of Public Welfare under Tom Corbett. Bob, thanks for joining us yeah, here on Rational Radio. thank you for coming Radio. on the show. Hey, uh, now is, it Ryan? is it Ryan? It is, yeah. Ryan and the other fellow's name? Ryan as well. Yeah. It's Ryan and Ryan. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So it's Ryan and Ryan. It yes, is, yes. Yeah. Okay, Ryan, th- Ryan and Ryan, thanks for having me on. Yeah, no problem. Thank you for coming on. So talk to us a little bit about why you think uh, this project won't kind of be what it's cracked up to be in Camden. Well, to start, retail, entertainment, offices, and services are certain nice, but when the, but the construction jobs come and go. Uh, the office and retail establishments are just moved in from the suburbs. So what we have is a reshuffling of the deck chairs. Sooner or later, the gleam is gone, and this place off becomes the shiny new place to go. So basically, I would suggest that the Waterfront Project is doomed from the start to become another Atlantic City. It's a boom and bust Waterfront Project that will, the shine of that will wear off as soon as some other place replaces it. Yeah, so I mean, I think it's interesting to see what I mean they've proposed for this because from the pictures that they've released, I mean, it looks like it looks like a very prosperous, a very prosperous environment. It looks like they're trying to portray here. If you, if you really want to create genuine wealth and revitalization, you really need to manufacture. Uh, from what I've read and studied of these plans, there's not a lot of manufacturing component to this, and it really pales in comparison to the glory days of Camden back in the 1950s. Back in the 1950s, you had, Camden had about 43,000 high-paying wage jobs. Great companies had huge production facilities. Campbell Soup, RCA, New York Shipbuilding, um, huge, huge, good jobs. 
jobs for average workers, most of whom did not have college degrees. And they could raise a family. It supported the city of Camden, and it created it. It, it contributed to a, a dynamic industrial region called Philadelphia and South Jersey. Yeah, Bob. So now that you're talking about this 1950-ish glory days of Camden, um, do you think that? In anywhere in the near future, Camden will be able to get back to that glory day status, or do you think that the damage has already been done and it's irreversible? Well, we could get that glory back if we brought back manufacturing. We've got to bring back true growth drivers to an economy. Services are fine, retail is fine, but there are no true growth drivers for an economy. You've got to have either manufacturing, agriculture, or resource extraction. Those are the three uh, vital components of wealth creation. So I would say we've got to bring back modern manufacturing industries to Camden, defense-related industries, steel, shipbuilding, electronics, and pharmaceuticals. And do you think that ultimately that's easier said than done? I mean, what what do you think is going to help entice these businesses to come back? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Businesses to come back. First of all, our federal policies, these trade deals we've had since NAFTA, the WTO, the pending TPP, will not help bring back manufacturing back. But I guess I would start with several things. One, I would, I would narrow those tax credits because this project relies on a lot of tax credits from the New Jersey Department of Environmental. Uh, uh, the, the New Jersey Economic Development Authority will be issued that track tax credits, but I would issue those tax credits, and I would devote them exclusively to bringing back actual manufacturing jobs, because manufacturing jobs um, are really the key for most average workers. It's the, it's the quickest route to the middle class, and it creates true wealth. Uh, yeah, so we're on the phone here with Bob Patterson talking about uh, the Camden New Revitalization Project. And so, Bob, what you're saying is you think that uh, manufacturing will it will be the key to the future for Camden. Is, is it in, in I, all? I, if, if we don't bring back manufacturing, Camden will never see uh, a renaissance. Okay, okay, yeah. I, I, I completely agree with you. I see, I see, yeah, there's a lot of work to be done, but I think that being on the waterfront, there's a lot to offer for manufacturing for shipping purposes. I mean, you can, you, I mean, there's so much that you can do there. Yeah. Absolutely. I, I couldn't agree more. I mean, the, the uh, New York Shipbuilding Corporation, um, back from World War One until the 1950s, was the largest and most productive shipbuilding uh, shipyard in the world. Mm-hmm. In the world. Yeah. And so... We've got to bring back some of these true growth drivers, and not just shipbuilding. I'd bring back electronics, steel, anything defense-related, pharmaceuticals. You know, Philly, South Jersey is a huge pharmaceutical center. Uh, these things are being made here. Yeah, I mean, it's. Uh, I mean, they have the perfect location. I mean, right on the Delaware yeah, River. Yeah. And I mean to be able to support like these like shipbuilding. I mean, yes. there's it's I a mean, path can, right there. That, yeah, I mean that could it's a path right there, and shipbuilding can bring so many jobs to that market that it, it could do immense immense work for that small community right there, and it can just completely just blow up and and just improve their economy in in Camden. Yeah, absolutely. When you when you, when you look at the labor market in New Jersey, two thirds of the labor market do not have a college degrees. And so we wow. got to figure out how do you create jobs for, for Americans without college degrees. Yes. And manufacturing has historically always been able to provide a good wage for average Americans. They're, they're coveted jobs with good benefits. You can raise a family on one salary um, or one wage. These are decent jobs. These are the jobs that Americans want. Yeah, and I think one thing uh, to point out in the article that uh, you wrote that is now on Philly.com and will be in the print edition tomorrow is that this uh, project is said to create thousands of new construction jobs, but once the construction is done, the jobs are gone as well. Well, that's true, too. And not only not only do the are the construction jobs short-term, but um, neither... Um, the Liberty Property Trust or the New Jersey EDA has called for a buy American component. Okay, you're building this these huge steel and glass skyscrapers. Why not require all the steel and all the glass 
I love the concrete. I love the wiring. Those things should be made in America. I, 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 compl I completely agree with you. That would dramatically help the, manu the American manufacturing sector. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that, that could exactly. be. I mean, that could be a huge part of it because then it just keeps fueling. Exactly, it fuels us. It fuels our people. And I mean, these manufacturing jobs. These are. This is what our country was built on. These were the people, the nine to five, who took their lunch pail to work every day, worked hard, put in a good day's work, and came back to their wife for a dinner, on, a dinner on their table. And that's what we need to get back to it here in Camden. And he, I, I completely agree with you, Bob. I mean, what you're saying is so true, and it, it's what is what it's the It's what's going to lead to the future of Camden. And Ryan, Ryan, yeah, Ryan, yeah. Yes. remember that Alexander Hamilton, our first defense, our, our first Treasury Secretary, he was the father of the first American industrial park up in Patterson, New Jersey. Okay. The first okay. industrial park. And he would, if he was running things today, he would insist that, Matt, that we build these things by Americans, we use American sources, uh, resources, and this is what helps stimulate manufacturing in a country. Yes, it does. But yeah. 100 percent. Absolutely. And I think it's just so interesting. I mean, because you always hear everybody out talking about, you know, this will create jobs and there are however many thousands of jobs that we're going to create. Yep. But then you don't look when you look further into it, how many of those jobs actually stay yeah. there are, and are, are, are long lasting right. and are, are, then can, can promote um, growth. And, and it's not just a dead end job. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I think that's something. And, and another thing that they've been touting, um, uh, and that Bob touched on, uh, you touched on this a little bit earlier, were the tax credits. And they've been saying that they've been able to offer huge tax credits for these people that they're hoping will help draw them in. Well, to keep and keep in mind, in the 1950s, there there were no generous tax credits issued by the state to bring in Campbell Soup or to bring in RCA or to New York Shipbuilding. These jobs, you know, didn't depend upon the generosity of the state. Um, and so there's another comparison why this does not, you know, does not hold a candle to Camden's glory days. Yeah, I mean, and it's uh, it's just, I mean, in the article you wrote, 11.9 unemployment rate in New Jersey. I mean, they're, I mean, they they want new jobs. They need yeah, new jobs yeah. to come into the state to yes. help stimulate the yes. the economy. And so, I mean, it's just, uh, it, it's something that's really interesting to look at. Uh, Bob, we really appreciate you calling yeah, into the show so to discuss this on. issue. Well, I'm, I'm glad you guys like the articles. Tell your listeners to get the newspaper tomorrow. Check it out. We will. Yeah, yeah we'll do. And hopefully uh, we can have you back sometime. Ryan and Ryan, I'd be glad to have I'd be glad to have have uh, be on your program again. Thank awesome. you, thank, thank you. you so much. It was great to talk to you. Thanks, Ryan and Ryan. No Thanks. problem. No problem. Um, so, yeah, great article by Robert Patterson. Um, check it out in the Philly Inquirer in print tomorrow, or if you're interested right now, it's on philly.com. But, yeah, you know, he, he comes back to the point of having manufacturing as the key to Camden for the future. And, he's, yeah. and I 100% agree with him. We need to get back to our roots of, of what he was saying in the glory days. And going back to our roots is what's going to pull Camden out of this slump that they're in right now, and it's going to make them a prosperous place again. They're going to bring in manufacturers. We had Campbell back then, and we can have shipyards right yeah. here on the the Delaware River. I mean, it's just one of those things that we need to go back from where we came from to get us out of the slump of where we are. And I think that's I think that's true for all across America right now. We're yeah. so reliant on other places all around the world that we need to get back to who we are, America, and where we come from, which is within our own borders. Yeah, well, why can't... I mean, how about we... Just Let's look at what we are good at and what we have a yes, surplus, yes. surplus of. I mean, he said it. We were built on manufacturing. Yeah, I mean, yeah, there are I mean, lots of we blue-collar workers that are skilled in that industry yes. that once it all went away, yes. I mean, then they're left they're, they're out to, of a job. Right. That's why our, our unemployment rate is where it's at right now. I mean, yeah. we had Bethlehem Steel, which I, I grew up 15 minutes away from the plant. And I mean, my great-grandfather worked there for, for his entire life, from when he got out of high school until he, he died. And... He provided for a family, and they were well. They did well. They didn't have to worry about where their next meal was coming from, and that's and that's what, like I said, that's what this this country was built upon, and that can still happen today. You know, we have we we have the resources to do that, and I don't understand why we don't. Yeah, no, I think it's definitely something that needs to be considered, and I love the point that he brought up about how um, how uh, b bring shipbuilding back and bring yes, defense exactly, industries back because exactly. look where they are. Yeah, they are right on the They're river, right on the water, and so that makes like you don't have to worry about man. How are we going to get a how train gonna, yeah. and a truck there? Yep. I mean, you and then it's you right can, there. Right, you can it's put so right much there. more on a ship mm -hmm. that you literally just send in from the ocean mm -hmm. up mm -hmm. the Delaware River. They offload right there. 
And then that brings then then that brings so much more to camp because then think of all the possibilities. Literally, you open up everything. Yeah. You put it on a ship. Yeah. And it can come right in. It can right come in. right in there. We can open up ports for you know um, shipping of uh, 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 import cars, things like that. You know, all the things that we import can come right into that area and can just be dispersed anywhere or bring right into us, right, right into the heart of Camden, and and then spread out through there. Yeah. So I mean, I see why they're why they want to go with the tall skyscrapers, right? Because yeah, they it's want the big it's, it's glory, like flashy, it's beautiful. Yeah. They want to make it a more pretty to look at. But when it comes down to it, we don't want pretty; we want results. Right. I and mean, results because, is what manufacturing is going to do. Yeah. I mean, because I mean, look at I mean what we talked about earlier: the construction jobs that will come, build it, and mm-hmm. then they will be gone. Yep. Once it is built, I mean, that's it. Yeah. Yeah, it's gone, and the, the, all that's left is those buildings. And right. those buildings itself, the buildings themselves aren't going to be creating jobs and giving get, like, giving money to the to the economy around Camden. But if we were to put substitute those two tall buildings that I'm looking at on the Philly.com website of of Robert Patterson's article, if you were to put two steel stacks there, you know, some some working men, those are what's going to create job, and that's what's yeah. going to make Camden better. And it's not to say that manufacturing doesn't. I mean. It's not going to make the city like ugly. Yeah, yeah, like it's, it, it, I mean, no. because then you take the money that it's generating, generating and, and then, then you put it back. Yeah. And I mean, maybe eventually we'll like get to this yeah, point. And then but you, like, you, we need to start from the bottom. Yes, we can't just say, yes. like, start at the bottom and say, all right, we're going zero to 100. And we're going to put a, a 30, 30 foot or 30 floor size yeah. skyscraper um, that's going to make our skyline look pretty. But no, if you, you know, they're going to have what? Two nice buildings right here on the waterfront. But then the rest is just going to be yeah. nothing much. I mean, if you look at the render, I mean, it is one tall building yep. and then there's like like nothing. It looks like a little small building. And then there's another yes. medium sized building and then it's back down. Yeah. It, but if they were to do, if they were to put manufacturing jobs, some factory shipbuilding right there, right. right on that waterfront. The rest, that whole horizon in the background, that would be filled with buildings like this. Right. Because and then you just build back from yes, it. You say, you okay, build here, back. here's yes. the manufacturing right on the waterfront. They can bring in their steel, mm-hmm. the everything, all their materials coming right here. And then look at this. Here's the business district. Yes. Look at everybody yes. in the back this right here. This is where our suburbs are. This is where the people who who are, are our manufacturers, are our pharmaceuticalists who are working in these factories, this is where they live. Yeah. This is this is their grand this is their grand vista. Yeah, so it something really interesting. Yeah. And our thanks to Bob for yeah, calling in the show a, to discuss I, this further. It's a great article, and I, I hope he comes back to talk to us sometime. Yeah, so make sure to check it out on philly.com now and in the Inquirer print edition tomorrow. And as for us here on Rational Radio, we are going to take a quick break, and then we will be right back talking all the big stories here on WHIP, Philly's number one college radio station. It's half past the top of the hour, and here's your WHIP Sports Update. I'm Tom Hanslin, and this report is brought to you by Peerless Boilers. It is Peerless who builds America's best boilers. Well, two teams from Philadelphia beat two teams from New Orleans this weekend, and we'll start with the Temple Football Owls as they improve to 5-0 with a 49-10 route over Tulane. They are now placed at 27th in the AP poll. Here is head coach Matt Rule on the win. I want to finish the year in the top 25, make no mistake. But right now, I don't care. All I care about is how we finish the I really care about how we finish the year. Like, you know, like, we're one game better right now than we were last year. And they will look for win number six against UCF on Saturday night. Meanwhile, at the link on Sunday, the Eagles also matched with a 39-17 beatdown of the Saints. Here is quarterback Sam Bradford on the performance. You know, obviously, it's not going to be like this every week. But, you know, to know that when we're clicking and we're rolling that we can go out and do that, you know, I think that's just going to give us confidence now to go out there and do it more often. And so the Birds improve to 2-3. and three. They will host the first-place Giants next Monday night. New York won on a late drive over the 49ers, 30-27. to The Redskins fell to the Falcons in overtime, 25-19. The Patriots were all over the Cowboys, 30-6. to The Chiefs fear that their running back Jamal Charles has a torn ACL. Tonight, the Steelers and Chargers play Monday Night Football. Baseball playoffs, the Blue Jays avoided a sweep in Texas yesterday with a 5-0 win. The Astros beat the Royals 4-1. They take a 2-1 series lead. ALDS Game 4 is today, while NLDS Game 3 is also take place. The Cardinals visit Wrigley to take on the Cubbies, and the Dodgers visit the Mets without Chase Utley, as he was suspended for Games 3 and 4 after a controversial slide that broke Ruben Tejada's leg in Game 2. It's 68 degrees with sunshine in Center City, and that's what's happening with reports half past the hour. This is Tom Hanslin, WHIP Sports. You're home for the main event weekdays 11 to noon, and the Temple Sports Hour from noon to 1.
Okay, forest animals, today is a new day. Kids are coming to the forest, and it's up to us to make their visit a good one. Sparrow. Yes? Have you practiced the most popular bird songs for the year? Of course. Catchy. I like it. Okay, River. Dude. How's the temperature? It's a refreshing 52 degrees, man. Perfect for a little riverside shoeless relaxation. Ah, good. Owl, you hear? Of course. Who, who's asking? I am. Look, you know the drill. Sleep during the day, scare the kids at night. Perfect. I love my job. Uh, Oak Tree? What's up? Still in the same place I left you last year. That's what I like. Consistency. Well, it's not like I'm going anywhere for the next couple hundred years. I know. I love it. Uh, Turtle. Turtle. He's not here yet, man. Ugh, he's late every morning. You'd think he would have learned by now to leave the night before our meetings. Okay. Squirrel, has anybody seen Mr. Yeah. Squirrel? The forest has been preparing just for you. Visit a forest near you today. To learn more about cool things to do in the forest, visit discovertheforest.org. Brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service and the Ad Council. People are always talking about the stock market. Always looking to invest in a good opportunity. Something with the potential to grow. So what if you could invest in the future? The future of kids, like a stock. Not the kind of stock where you invest to make money, but a stock for a social change. A whole new kind of investment called Better Futures. When you invest, it helps students like me go to college, which ends up making the future better for everybody. I could be the first college graduate in my family, the first district attorney from my neighborhood. And if I'm the first, then maybe there will be a second and a third. This can really be the start of something. My name is Charles, and I'm your dividend. Invest in better futures with UNCF. Visit uncf.org slash invest. A mind is a terrible thing to waste, but a wonderful thing to invest in. A public service announcement brought to you by UNCF and the Ad Council. Hey, it's Colleen from Saturday Night Online and Q102, and you're listening to Philly's number one college radio station, WHIP. Listeners to Rational Radio here on WHIP, the number one college radio station in the city of brotherly love. And Ryan, how's my money doing today? Is my pocket full or is it, uh, am I searching for change? Uh, you should not be searching for too much change today, but maybe a little bit, I guess. I don't know. The Dow, every, everybody's in the green right now. That's good. Um, the uh, Dow Jones is up uh, just over 52. The NASDAQ up about eight and a half. And the S&P 500 up just over two and a third. So uh, some of the big highlights on Yahoo Finance. Uh, the uh, Fed is setting December as their target month for the uh, increase in interest rates. Okay. So they've been talking about that all year, and we will okay. see if it'll come by the end of the year. And uh, oil, the price of oil drops over 4% uh, based, based on OPEC uh, increasing their output. Um, so we'll see what that does uh, in uh, with gas prices, and Pepsi is now uh, getting ready to market mobile phones and accessories what? in China. Okay. So, yeah, so the markets will close in about 19 minutes. And uh, Twitter actually saying today that they are uh, reporting huge layoffs. Oh. So, interesting to look at right. in the uh, technology sector there. Uh, but, yeah, now it's, uh, now it's time to move on to our uh, next story here. And this was a story that happened um, a, a while ago, but now there's just uh, new information that came out, um, and it was in. This is in relation to the uh, shooting death by police of a 12 year old um, boy in Cleveland. Tamir uh, Rice. Yeah, Tamir Rice. And um, basically, what uh, what was what was found is that uh, Tamir Tamir Rice was playing with a pellet gun in a public park, and that's when the police approached him. This, according to an article on the Daily Beast, and the article says he was killed within seconds. The police thought that the pellet gun was an actual handgun, mm-hmm. um, and so now there were um, uh, two independent. 
uh, uh, reviews conducted of the shooting uh, by retired FBI agent Kimberly Crawford and Denver prosecutor S. Lamar Sims. And basically, they were requested by the Cayuga County District Attorney, and uh, these people are deemed to be uh, use of force experts, and that they said that the uh, police officer acted reasonably. Yes. Yeah. So something very interesting to discuss here because when this happened, um, lots of people – this was in the midst of, of uh, uh, many claims by various people of police brutality and excessive use of uh, lethal force by police officers. Mm-hmm. And should they undergo more training to use uh, – and, and to know when to use lethal force and when should they not use it and yep. when should they use like a taser or something yes, like that. Yes. And now these two independent reports that were completely separate. Both said yeah. that he was with the, that the officers were, walk, were working within reason. Um, so the name of this article was when shooting a 12 year old is deemed reasonable. So right when you see this headline, you're, it draws your attention. Wow. You're, you're, this is talking about the ending of a 12 year old life. Um, if you ever want to call in, Give us your opinion on what we're talking about. We're at 215-204-WHIP. This is definitely something that everyone's going to have opinion on. We'd love to hear what you're sa- what you're thinking, and uh, we'd love to converse with you here on the show live. Um, but yeah, you know, it's just it's one of those things right now that there's a lot of things going on in the news within the past couple months, this past year, of our officers working within their within their within reason of of their brutality and how they're handling certain situations. And it's good to hear that after some of the reports that have come out recently, that these cops in a very controversial incident came out and they did the right thing. It's good to hear. It's good to hear that there are still cops out there who are following the the right procedures and are doing things right. Even though it's a tough decision to make, that they did the right thing. They did the right thing. I think most of them are usually making the right decisions. Oh yeah, no, I 100% agree. With like isolated incidents, all of, all cops are getting bad rest yes, for yeah, that. So yeah. It's it the, does, it's the, not fair. It's the actions of a few that are tainting the whole. The, all co- I, yeah. I, you know, America's cops and police forces are the best out there in the world. I, I hats off to them what they do. I could never get up each morning and you know wonder if I'm going to make it home the next day. Right. I, I could never imagine that. So um, it's it, but it, it's reassuring to hear that we that we are still you know painted in the news right now. There's this whole thing that cops are bad, and it's good to hear that there are still cops out there who are still giving the good name to the police force because that is a noble job and it's something that you know not a lot of people can do it's just like our veterans you know they're constantly being bashed for for what they do but it's not you know they're going out there they're thousands of miles away from their families and they have the hardest job out there so it's even so on on a a parallel level these cops are kind of like our domestic soldiers so it's good it's good to know that you know that they're doing the good they're fighting the good fight and they're doing the good thing out there for us I mean they put their lives on the line every day for our safety and I guess it's easy for us to say like if we were in that situation there's no way we would have shot a 12 year old but we can't even begin to imagine what that must have yeah. been like for him. Yeah, I mean, seeing a seeming, seeing a, a, a seemingly live weapon in the hands of a 12-year-old, you, you know, anytime you're, you're a cop and you're faced with um, a situation like that where you see a weapon, I, I couldn't imagine what's going through their mind. My, my, my thing is, you know, there's those shows out there, cops, things like that, that go, like, through routine traffic stops, and... Um, my, I, I always wondered to myself, how would I act, you know, walking up to a car co- or walking up to a car where you have no clue what's going on inside and just strolling up and saying, you know, what you did, what you're doing right now is wrong. You never know yeah, what's going to happen. Exactly. You could be walking to your death right now. So I that my biggest praise to cops out there for doing that, because I know me personally, I'd never be able to do that. Yeah, yeah no, I mean, it would. I I mean it's just hard to you know just picture that so I mean yeah, yeah. they do have and they have a vital job too oh, so, in society yes, yes. but now we look at this and um and I mean Later on in the article that uh, it talks about um, how the retired FBI agent, uh, Kimberly Crawford, uh, decided that the officer's use of force did not violate the child's constitutional rights and that the officer had no information to suggest the weapon was anything but a real handgun. And when you see that, like, I mean, if you're going to approach somebody about 
something that you think is quote unquote suspicious. Yeah. And you right. see him either either move his hands toward his waist or oh, towards you're, his you're pocket. Expecting the worst. Right. You're I mean, you're, you're, you've got your hand on yeah. your gun yeah. because you don't know where he's going. And Especially, when you see yeah. when you see something that looks like a, a gun, a gun. Why are you gonna? I yeah, mean, why are you gonna take that chance? Right. I, I mean, this is horrible because there was a 12 year old boy that was killed. Yeah. But I mean, if you're the Look at it from the other perspective. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he is he doesn't know that it's a pellet gun. For all he knows it could be a 3D printed gun. Yeah, cuz there's Dang. because I mean, there are 12-year-olds out there who I'm sure do own guns, who have right. gang affiliations. So he doesn't right. know that. So he's going in with the mindset I'm protecting myself and the people around me. Yeah. So, you know, I I I I commend him for the for what he had uh, it, what he did, what he had to do was awful, but I commend what he did. Because it was a tough decision, but he did what he was right for himself and the, for the people around him. Yeah. Right. He deals with the worst on a day-to-day basis. Yes. So, assuming that that would have been a real gun, I I don't know. I feel like he was not in the wrong. No. 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 I don't either. Not at all. Yeah. And, I mean, it's just something that's so – I mean, it's just been in the news so much. And that, you know, right after it happens – there is so much information that's out there. Yeah. Nobody, nobody knows what's true, but they'll latch yeah. on to some piece of they'll, it. They'll latch on to something that they feel is, you know, right. that, that aligns with their values and, yeah. and aligns with what they think. So they're going to latch on to that, and they're not going to let go of it. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, you're right. You know, once once incidents like these happen, the floodgates open of information, you know. Um, you know, all of a sudden you're bringing up um, uh, records of that police officer from 10 years ago and how he handled the situation and how he might have a, a track record of this and that and this and that. But And there's just all this information that's hard to grasp and analyze what's really going on yeah. um and it's just hard it's hard to get a it's hard to think of what's actually going on and it's hard to align yourself with one specific thing because you, there's just so much out there it's it's over it's overbearing well people usually latch onto the racial aspect of these yeah, situations every, everyone so always everyone always goes to the race car if well, you why listen, not if you listen to the beginning of the article they say a year after a 12 year old black boy was killed by a white cleveland police yeah, officer yeah why why do you even need to say that immediately well they can say like that the boy who was killed was black but immediately when they say that the police officer who killed him was white that's going to you're starting off with a bias already against yeah. police officers cuz you know pe- people of- are always talking about how race is race ever going to go away? No, it's not going to go away when you have when you have an opening article line like that. A black boy who was killed by a white cop. Why do you need to say that? Why can't you say a 12 year old boy was shot and killed by a Cleveland police officer? Because Why do you have- this was proven not to be racially motivated, so those two things weren't. Yeah, I understand that, but like I'm saying on a broad scale, you know, that probably yeah. would be that, that's that you know in headlines all today you see a oh, black male was shoot but shot by a white cop or this a uh, black man was um was you know in a in a fight with a white guy and things got out of hand and one person's in the hospital and people just go right to the race card. No, you know a lot of people just have beef with each other and things go down. Um, or they have you know in, they they don't they don't think the same way and things just happen. It's not because he's black. Or it's not because he's white. It's just things happen sometimes. Yeah. We're, we're human beings, but people always point to the race card immediately, and I, I I can't stand that. And they well, I mean, look, let's look at. I mean, if we look at just a small snippet of the facts, what what has now been written about in this article and then in the investigations as fact is that this police officer saw the twelve year old boy. He saw him, and he was. Um, I, I believe that the article said he was in a park. Yes, he was in a. He was the Tamir Rice was playing with a pellet gun in a public park when a squad car approached him. All right, so that sentence right there, yeah. Tamir Rice. He was in a public park. Mm-hmm. Okay, and the squad car approached him. We don't know. We don't know why the squad car approached him, but he did. Yeah, squad right. car approached him. He approach. He then proceeds to go and uh, and and then further investigate when he sees. Tamir Rice pull for what he thinks, what the officer thinks is a gun. Okay? Yep. And it's not that he is out there to kill black children. He's there it to... Is, he, he was he, investigating some something. Some suspicious we don't, we, act, we don't, we don't suspicious, know. Yes, yeah, he was there some and, suspicious act. And he sees, and he sees whether he, he, he moved his hands or whether he moved his jacket, whatever. He saw what resembled an actual gun. And I mean, if you see, I mean, he doesn't want to die himself. Yeah, no. And I, I don't think he learned in, at the police academy to just, you know. Shoot first and ask questions later. Right. I, I, I don't think they said, oh, if you see a gun, you know, think about it for a couple minutes before you do anything. Yeah. You know, I mean, because then that's if you if you fear for your life. 
I mean, you, because you then... You need to prepare to use deadly force. Right. Yes. And, it's and that's not, what they're taught. Right. And it's not, he looked at him and he's just like, oh, I'm going to shoot this yeah. kid. Yeah. It's it's not just, you know, oh, I'm driving down the road. Oh, yeah, here, like, here, yeah. I mean... Do you guys think the investigation would have been different, like, had the cop been black? Yeah, I do. I, I, do you I, think the independent investigation would have been different? And, um, No, I feel, well... Yeah, I feel the independent investigation would be different. You know, the race card wouldn't have been played then. It wouldn't be in the headlines. It wouldn't be um, – it wouldn't be – I don't think it would be in the headlines of every huge um, news station in the country. Um, I feel as though it would just be another – I mean, how many times are, are you know, white cops – kill um white citizens for um things that are you know you know whether they pull a gun on them those aren't i mean yeah they're in the headlines but they're not like on fox news right. or cnn you know local police um local policeman fires and kills um uh, a, a drug trafficker in the streets of so-and-so county and whatever you're not going to see that on big headlines but you are going to see local um a local black cop or local right. white cop shoots black or white um, civ civilian in heated debate or something like that. That's what you're going to see on the big headlines. Right. Um, so that's why I think that if it was a black cop, this wouldn't be this wouldn't this independent inv investigation of was this officer in the right? It wouldn't have been. Right. It just wouldn't have been out there. Wouldn't have been done. And I think regardless of the race of the police officer, anyone would have done the same thing in his position. Oh, yeah, so. yeah. I mean, he did. You know, without a doubt, I'm sure he's he goes to bed at night wondering every night if what he did was was right. And I'm sure that these independent studies that have come out, these papers that were written by the former FBI agent, um, it, you know, came, when they came out, I'm sure that put him at ease. I'm sure that helped him sleep at night and say, you know, what I did, a lot of people might think I was wrong, but on a on a level of of the police um, um, steps to do and and what I'm taught, uh, what I did was right. So morally, people might look at him and say, well, you shot a 12 year old kid. Well, you know what? I didn't know. All right. I didn't know if, the, if what he had was a real gun. I didn't know if he had the motive to kill me. I didn't know he had the motive to kill anybody else around me. So as a police officer, I have to do what I have to do to ensure the lives of everyone around me and myself. So, yeah. so I'm sure that these investigative studies that came out to to make sure that what he did was right, I'm, I'm sure that put him at ease. So, yeah. I mean, I, I mean, yeah. I mean, it definitely helps him because, I mean, you know, some, I mean, I, I can't speak for him, but I don't think that most police officers, if any, walk out the door in the morning and say, you know, like, I'm going to kill somebody today. No, that's the last thing right. they want to do. I mean, I mean this, is not, this is not like something that, uh, for whatever is portrayed in the media, this is not something that is like, you know, like, that they want to be part of their job. Yeah, no, they don't. I mean, it's not, they don't, they don't people carry a gun to, they don't carry a gun to, with the intention of yeah, shooting no. people, they carry it for, for protection. protection. They don't. People don't sign up to be a police officer to want to kill people. Oh, right. I want to kill people, so I'm going to go into the police force. No, no they want to do it to ensure security right. and protection for all um, innocent civilians. I mean, that's, that's why what, they do right. it. And that's why the police carry what they do on their waist. I yes. mean, it's not to. It's for right. their protection and the protection of the citizens. Yes, people, I mean. Yes. People are criticizing um, Officer Loman, which who was he was the officer yes. that shot the boy. He said um, that he was heard on dispatch tapes describing the quote unquote baby face boy as a black male in his twenties. But I don't think that his inaccurate description should be a fault on him because no. he wasn't paying as much attention to the boy's face as he was to the fact a, that he was playing with a gun. Yeah, and the fact that he might be be shot within right. moments. So, yeah, exactly. I, yeah. So something that's very interesting yeah. now, these further developments in the story, once it, it's always interesting to see yeah. when, when we take a step back after everything after, after has the settled, dust is settled and, and everything. we say, let's look at the See, that's what I want to happen. When this happens, let's, let's not look jump at the facts. Right. Let let's me look, look at, at the, at the facts. facts. Okay. At seven o'clock PM, a police officer approached a subject he, he deemed as suspicious for regardless whatever reason. Regardless of race. Right. Regardless of race. He, the, he, he, the facts. He yes. approached him on after. Apple Street. Yes. And he, he was in a public park. Correct. Said, yes. In a public park, the officer proceeded to get out of his car, noticed suspicious behavior, noticed him climbing on a fence, uh, climbing a light pole, whatever the case, individual case is. And then then whatever transpired, because then it's then it's the fact. That's what happened. And it's yes. often hard to do that when it's just a police officer and the subject. Yeah. So then it gets us back to our discussion about body cameras. Yes. 
on that, police officers, that fil- which that is what Philadelphia why- cops are using around our our specific area as well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you're right. It, it, it needs to come down to the facts, and like you said, it's hard to to distinguish facts um, from time to time when it's just a one subject and another subject. You know, there's a lot of for dis- there's a lot of room for discrepancy in gray area. But yeah, so. Yeah. Great discussion today. Great discussion about today. A, about a bunch of issues. We thank Bob again yeah, for coming thank Bob. on. Yeah, Bob. If he's still listening, you know, thank you for coming on today. I'd love to have you back at some point. Yeah, it was a great discussion about uh, Camden, what the future holds for them. So make sure to check out his article in print in the Inquirer tomorrow. But as for us, that'll just about do it. So make sure to tune in to us tomorrow again from 3 to 4 on WHIP Radio, Philly's number one college radio station. Have a great, great day, day, everybody.